Hello, Mr. Claudi here. And today we are going to continue looking at our intro to probability. This time we're going to look at theoretical probability. If you remember from our lesson yesterday, uh, we looked at experimental probability, which is where I don't understand the system, so I have to run a bunch of tests to figure out the probability that something's going to happen. In theoretical probability, the definition, it's probability based on a mathematical analysis. So here, I can actually analyze the system and figure out the probability that something's going to happen. No experiment is needed. So no experiment is carried out. So to do this, and we're going to be doing lots of this, this chapter. So to do this theoretical probability, first of all, I need to define the sample space. Now, sample space is all the possibilities, all the possible outcomes. And we usually define this as U. We call U the universal set. Then, to calculate the probability of event A occurring, I would count the number of items, a number of uh, ways the event can occur, and divide it by the number of possible outcomes, or the number of elements of my, uh, of my universal set. So this is our notation. Na is the number, n is for number, of ways that oops, event A can occur. And Nu is the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, so let's analyze the system. A box contains three bran, four blueberry, five, four banana, five blueberry, and three carrot muffins. This is delicious. Uh, what is the theoretical probability that you will not choose a blueberry muffin? Just remember, Carol's not choose a blueberry muffin. So this is a system that we can analyze because we know everything in the box. So let's see if we can figure out the probability of not choosing a blueberry muffin. Okay, well. Let's look at first the sample space, NU. Remember, this is the total number of possible outcomes. So this would be the total number of muffins. OK, well, let's see. I have 3 plus 4 blueberry plus 5, sorry, 4 banana, 5 blueberry plus 3 carrot. That gives me 15 muffins. Okay, and now we need to find Na. Well, hold on. What is the event here that we're looking at? The event A we should define as not choosing blueberry. It's just weird because I, who doesn't like blueberry muffins? Okay, so not choosing blueberry, how many options are there? Well, there's the three bran, four banana, three carat. So that is 10 options. So now to find the probability of not choosing blueberry, I would take my number of elements, which is 10, divided by the total, which is 15. Uh, just a note, well here, and if you want, if you don't like uh, 10 over 15, you can divide it by, f you can rewrite it as 0 0.667. So we would always round to three sig figs or leave as a fraction. So you could just leave it like this, uh, 10 over 15, or you can uh, turn into a decimal, which is not necessary, but you, if you do, you have to turn to three significant figures. And you don't need, if you leave it as a fraction, there's no need, it's not explicitly required to reduce. So you could just leave it as 10 over 15. If you like, you could reduce it to 2 over 3, but it's not necessary. Okay, let's turn the page. Nope, let's turn this page. Okay, let's analyze, this is cool. Once we know how to analyze uh, the probability of something, there, we can analyze so many things in our life. For example, let's analyze the game of Battleship. Now, if you ever played the game of Battleship, you'll know that you have a 10 by 10 grid and you've placed some uh, different ships on it. And your friend has a 10 by 10 grid with their ships. And you have to guess random locations and try to sink all their ships. So 
we will try to analyze this by finding the theoretical probability of hitting a ship on the first guess. So first of all, if we're going to find this problem, we can analyze the system. First, we need to know the number of possibilities when you're firing uh, the, for the first time. Well, it's a 10 by 10 grid. So there are 100 possible shots you can take. Now, how many result in a hit? We'll call A uh, the event here would be hitting a ship. Now this is where you would need to either Google a battleship or remember some of the, you know, how the game was played. But you had five ships. You had a carrier, which was five, battleship, which is four, destroyer, which is three, submarine, which is three, and a little carrier, which is two. So the hits would be, okay, hitting the carrier, the battleship. I have to add up all those possible hits. And that is 9, 10, 11, 17. So my probability of hitting a ship is uh, 17 out of 100, which is, oops, or 17 per, uh, 0 0.17. Which you can write either, right? Either is acceptable. Huh. So if you do hit someone on the first uh, shot, you know, it's, it's, you're like, oh, wow, it's so lucky. Well, it kind of is, because look how low the probability is. What is the probability of a miss on the first guess? Well, let's use a complement. Remember I talked about complement before? This is uh, all the, so if A is hitting a ship, the probability uh, of A, or sorry, A complement would be not hitting a ship. So that would, if there's 17 that have ships on them, then there would be 100 minus 17 equals 83 spots that don't have a ship, that are just ocean. So this is not hitting a ship. So the probability of a complement is 83 over 100 or 0 0.83. Probability of a, probability of a complement. Uh, cool, we've just analyzed your favorite game, Battleship also a terrible movie was made of it. We can represent this probability as a Venn diagram. This is what tomorrow's lesson is. It's all about Venn diagram, but we'd like to set it up a little bit today. It's a long lesson. So at least give you an idea of what a Venn diagram kind of looks like. So we have the sample space U. Remember, the sample space U is all the possible options, all 100. And then we have a circle, and we label it A for that event A. This represents all the possible uh, options of my event. I think there were 17 possibilities. And if you want to think about it, like this is getting a hit. Then outside of A, uh, you know, outside that circle, I have A complement. There are 83 in this area, and this is technically a miss or not a hit. So in this way, I can represent these probabilities using uh, this Venn diagram. We'll do more of this in our next lesson, but at least you get an idea of what's coming. Okay. Now for the following uh, question, it. it helps to watch this really great video series, The Art of Problem. It's all about cryptography and um, uh, encryption. Uh, it's an eight-part series. It's really excellent, really well done. Uh, you can watch number three. That's the one that's pertinent to this question here. Uh, I'll post the, well, you could search it on YouTube, or I'll post a link in this video uh, if you look in the notes for this video. But we can also go through it without um, without the video, but I really highly recommend watching it. So you have, okay, what's the probability of rolling a six with a dice? So here, I mean, you guys have rolled a dice before, you know there's six sides, you know they're all equally likely. The possibilities are one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's my set of all the different possibilities. So the number of elements, the number of elements in that set, the sample space, the number of possibilities is six. How many ones of those, how many of those sides are a six? Well, there's just one side. 
right? There's only one way to roll a six. Okay, so the probability of rolling a six is one out of six, which, if you like, is zero point one six seven. It's very low. Okay, this changes though when I look at rolling two dice. So if I roll two dice at the same time, what is the probability of rolling a six? To analyze this uh, question, what we're going to do is make a table to represent my sample space. So here's the first die, here's the second die. So there's all these different possibilities. I can roll a one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the second dice I can have all these possibilities. So you can roll a one and a one, that gives you a total of two. You can roll a two on the first dice, one, that's three, four, so I can actually fill this in with the total that you roll, right? If I roll a one on dice one and a three on dice two, my total is four. Follows a nice pattern too. Okay, so there are all the different possibilities. Now the question was saying, what's the probability of rolling a six when you roll two dice? Well, you can either have this, which is okay, a five and a one, a two and a four, three and a three, four and a two, and a five and a one. So there are five ways of rolling a six. And how many possibilities are there? Well, there's six times six, so that's 36 outcomes. Okay, so if I want to find the probability of rolling a 6, it is 5 over 36, which is about, oops, wrong calculator, 5 divided by 36, which is about 0 0.139. So it's actually a lower chance of rolling a 6 if you have two dice. Now, look at that last question there. It is when rolling two dice, which outcome has the highest probability? and we see that the one that comes up the most is seven. So, and we can figure out the probability, right? The probability of rolling a seven, how many options are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six out of 36. Uh, so the probability is same as before, 0 0.167. So of all, when you roll two dice, you're, the probability, if we analyze the system, we're very likely to roll a seven. That's the highest uh, option. It comes up the most. It has a probability of 16, 17%. Uh, this is why you know, people will say, lucky number seven comes up so often. Well, it comes up so often because of theoretical probability, not because it's lucky. So that's what that video kind of talked about, right? It's not... When a number comes up, it's not emotional, it should, it's theoretical. Uh, similarly, a 2, 12, these are very unlikely things that could happen. 2 only happens once out of every 36 times. Uh, there, we just taught you some uh, card counting. You're, you're beginning of car how to analyze games at the casino. So, again, the, you know, every game at the casino, if you know the parameters, you can figure out the probability. There's a great video, this, uh, if you've just watched The Gambling with Secrets Part 3, it was good. Part 4 is excellent as well. It's about private key cryptography, so it's about how cryptography works, an introduction to it. It's really good. Um, I really recommend it if you have five minutes. Uh, okay, your homework then is... Now it applies to both sections. Page 67, number 1 to 7. And it goes without saying that we hope may the odds be ever in your favor. Right, that's our Hunger Games quote of the day. Okay, good luck with that homework, and we will see you next time.